I feel like I'm going to offend you now because you've you've got a pet. You know the tip with those? Yeah. Just size up. Just size up once. Some people just have an immaculate sense of style, and one of those people is Jess Seaman. She's a former sports TV presenter who became a successful style influencer after turning her passion for fashion into a career. With hundreds of thousands of followers across Instagram and YouTube, she joins me today to share some of her expert tips for achieving that effortlessly elegant look by investing in the right pieces in the right sizes. And for some items of clothing, she believes that size is not necessarily your usual one. So let's hear now how we can elevate our style over 40 and what some of the most common pitfalls are that can hold us back. Jess, it's good to see you. And needless to say, you look stunning, just so chic. Bless you. Thank you. It's lovely to be here. So thank you for asking me to come on and have a little chit chat with you. Oh, no, it's my absolute pleasure. And I, I did have to think more carefully about what I was going to wear today. So I've played it safe. In black <laughs> t -shirt. You don't have to think like that with me at all. Well, and I, it's I, too hot today to be super stylish. It's, it's just boiling out there. I know. Even in Edinburgh, it's warm. Um, you know, but last time I had a style expert on the channel. She was a vision like you. She was in this beautiful white shirt. And I was wearing a multicolored stripy tank top, right, with a black bodysuit underneath. So you couldn't even make my arms out against the, the dark room behind me. And it, it was just a disaster. So I'm trying to redeem You're myself. You're camouflaging yourself somehow. Well, I mean, it does look like you have been a fashion guru forever, but that's not actually the case. So can you take us along the path that led to you being a top style influencer? So... I remember being about seven years old and wanting to be a TV presenter. It was always what I wanted to do. Sending my tape out and all of them would refuse me. I'd always get refusal letters. Eventually I got a hit and someone gave me a chance on a really quite bad TV channel called Live TV. I remember it. But in actual fact, in terms of the back end of it, it was a brilliant, brilliant training ground for if you want to work in TV, you kind of just got through into everything. So you would have to do your pieces to camera while pressing the auto cue with your own, with your foot, changing the camera, writing your scripts, doing some editing. So it was a great training ground. And then unfortunately, six months after shipping myself down to London, moving down to London and starting afresh, the channel went into administration. So I was like, no, I love being in London. I love presenting. And so I very luckily went into modeling for a while. So I would do modeling to pay the bills. And then every time I got a presenting job, I'd go off and do that and did various different things. And eventually I, through a windy road of my 20s, ended up on Sky Sports, uh, presenting Sky Sports News, which for those who know me well, my my knowledge of football is uh, quite funny because I am not into football in the slightest whatsoever. So did you blag that one in the interview and go, oh, I've, I've had a lifelong passion for football? He said, so you don't know anything about football. You don't know anything about cricket. You don't know anything about darts. Why should I hire you? And I remember saying, because I'm a really good presenter and I'll I'll pick it up, which is really kind of cocky, actually. Like it. But he was like, go on then, I'll give you a shot. And I threw myself into this job. And I think I learned that you do need to love the subject matter as much as presenting as well, because it's yeah. very hard to keep it up and talk about something that you're not very interested about. So being involved in the fashion industry, you know, from modeling, uh, all, you know, always being on set and meeting stylists, that kind of creative world was definitely where my, my heart was at. You know, long story short, moved back up north from London, had our children, started a candle company. My entire house was covered in candles. Then I think I, I remember thinking, well, why don't I can present to camera? I can talk to camera. Why don't I start a YouTube channel and I can talk about fashion, which I could do with my eyes closed. And then once in a while, I'll say, oh, by the way, I make candles. Mm -hmm. Very quickly realized no one was particularly interested in my candles. They just want to hear about my love of fashion and tips about how yeah. to put outfit ideas together. So that's kind of how it started on a, a weird and winding kind of road. 
we met at a YouTuber event and I have to say, you know, we were surrounded always. I, what I love about these YouTuber events is that the people of a certain age, you, nev you never have any problems socializing when you're a certain age because there's so few of us that we just all sort of find each other and group together. So we did actually, we did we? I don't know how we gravitated towards each other, but it was like instant. I know. Hello. But you, do you know what? You stood out. You were in a, a, in a room full of people of all ages, but a lot of young people. They're very stylish. And you walked in and I thought, oh my goodness, who is that incredibly elegant woman so it just you can tell you're just naturally well put together and I can see why there's such an interest in in how you do it once you get to a certain age um I feel like there are two common pitfalls which are either just kind of giving up on what's in style altogether and sticking with what you feel comfortable in which I have to you know I lean towards that I have to kind of drag myself out or you can kind of become a slave to what you see on Instagram and you end up wasting money on short-lived trends. You know, what, what do you think we should be aiming for style-wise, do you think, from midlife to kind of embrace our individuality but also look our best? I personally think that the way I approach dressing and the way I advise people with their own style is that you can have a mixture of both. You can feel absolutely comfortable in your outfit ideas and dapple with a few trends here and there at the mm -hmm. same time. You don't have to do one or the other. There's a way very easily, actually, to be able to mix the two. And I think it's very easy to become quite a slave to the fashion trends, which I think lots of us maybe had a time doing that in our 20s. Mm -hmm. I know I certainly did. And Instagram can be quite bad for that. You see those girls who are just you know the oversized look for for example yeah. and they just look completely drowning in fabric and it kind of looks cool in a t in a in a picture on there but in real life popping down to the shops to do your friday big shop it's not very cool no so i personally think it's about focusing on those timeless pieces which we can get onto in a minute mm -hmm. but really bringing it down to those timeless pieces really thinking about what you truly feel comfortable in whether that be for you a skirt or a pair of tailored trousers or your jeans not forgetting what makes you feel really really nice mm. and then not being afraid at the same time whatever age you are to throw in the odd fashion trend here and there if you feel it suits you and you like the style because so I think we can all get a little bit hung up on like oh I can't wear that because I'm over 40 or I can't wear that I'm too old for that and I personally don't really believe in that saying there are certain yeah. things I wouldn't wear but I wouldn't wear them when I was 20 either you know just because I'm 45 years old doesn't mean I don't have a really big interest in the fashion trends mm -hmm. I might not want to wear it head to toe but I still like them and I still like to introduce them a little bit here and there and there's absolutely ways you can make that look classy and elegant and in your own personal style too. Are there some common mistakes, do you think, that we can make that are particularly unflattering? You mentioned the kind of oversize. That's, that's an easy one sometimes, isn't it? Especially if you're sort of going through a phase where you're not feeling so good about your shape. It's easy to kind of go, right, I'm just going to put something kind of big and floaty on. What are some of the most common mistakes that you see? Try not to buy into every single trend because not every single trend is going to suit every single person and everybody's different body shapes. So I would, for instance, the, the new fashion trends are coming up. Feathers are one of them. Probably not for me. Worth mentioning it for somebody else. Maybe it might be their cup of tea. Incorporating feathers into clothing or accessories or just everything? Anything. Anything okay. and everything. A little sprinkling of feathers, even a little bit on your bag. You could do it in a very mild way and just have some sort of little detailing. It's probably not one of the fashion trends I would personally go to. Because on the flip side of that, a very ladylike Jackie Onassis kind of look is also coming in fashion for autumn, winter 2024. So that's probably, I'll go, well, that's not really going to suit me, but I'll veer towards that one instead because that's more my cup of tea. And I dress like that quite naturally anyway, so I know it's going to suit me. So I think it's about twisting in terms of trends, twisting the trends to make them suit you and your true personal style, 
And if it won't work, don't try and shoehorn it in. If it's not working, say, okay, that one's just not really for me. And then on the flip side of that as well, I think thinking about your body shape is really important, which I talk about a lot on my channel and what suits me might not suit somebody else, might suit somebody, you know, it's, it's we're all very different shapes and sizes. And also I think as well, it's important to think about the balance of your outfit. So for instance, if you really love your skinny jeans still, if you're really into skinny jeans, they I probably wouldn't wear that with big clumpy shoes on my feet and a tight top. Because mm -hmm. if you imagine it, you're just making one straight shape, this, and then these big giant shoes, which were really popular for a while on your feet, you're not sort of giving any contrast with that shape. So for me personally, I would probably style that skinny leg of the jean with a pretty belly flat, make it look a tiny bit Parisian, a little mm -hmm. bit of a French vibe going on. I'd probably add a belt, give my waist a bit more definition. And then for contrast to that skinny, wear something a little bit bigger on my top half and a, a billowing pretty blouse rather than anything too tight. So that you're thinking about that contrast, that high-low approach. I think that's an easy way to twist things on the head to, to make them work better. I don't, I don't believe there's any right or wrong in fashion. And I, I really dislike those those videos that are like don't do this do this because it might actually work for somebody it might mm. be how they like to style an outfit but I like to give people an option of if that isn't your cup of tea maybe try it like this well I mean I went through years of wearing the skinny jeans and that was just like my wardrobe uniform and then all of a sudden they were out um and I remember getting into the car with a with a friend to give her a lift to the restaurant we were we were going and she was like oh you've still got skinny jeans on you know they're gone now you've got to wear the wide leg trousers and all the rest of it and I thought well do I but over time they've definitely been phased out is that is that fashion crime the the, the skinny jeans now because a lot of people still wear them and, and look great a lot of people do and to be honest I think I'm personally not really reaching for them at the moment however yeah. I think if they really suit you, and again, it hops back to what you feel comfortable in, mm -hmm. if they really suit you and you feel really nice in them, wear them. Ignore what is on trend or not on trend because that is obviously your personal style. And anyone who says, oh, they're, they're out of fashion, why are you wearing those? It's just, it's just nonsense. They make you feel good. You can, you can bring the rest of your outfit up to date with the other elements you add in and sprinkle a... a I don't know, a khaki jacket that's going to be big this autumn, winter with your skinny jeans. So you're giving a nod to the trends with your item on your bottom half that you feel really comfortable in. I really, I I just have a thing against that kind of, I don't like a kind of pretentiousness in fashion yeah. and that too cool for school kind of vibe. I think fashion for me is it's individual, it's original, it's everybody should be exactly who they are and be free to be exactly who they are and how they feel comfortable. And that to me is when people look their absolute best, when they're wearing what they, what they love and they feel nice in. I do like the idea of a capsule wardrobe. I, I find myself wearing a few things that I love over and over and not getting too worried about being seen in, in the same thing all the time or the same style of thing, like, you know, little white t-shirts or whatever. I mean, I'll, I'll wear them all the time. Um, are there some things that you think, you know, particularly thinking about midlife onwards, are there some few little gems that you think we should all have in our wardrobe or some kind of variant of in our wardrobe? Probably for the last 10 years or so, I've become a wee bit obsessed with blazers. I find them absolutely amazing for just suddenly elevating an outfit. Whatever you're yeah. wearing, even if you're wearing like your gym, you've just done your workout, you've got to do the school run, you've kind of got a hoodie on and a pair of leggings, throw a blazer over the top and suddenly you've made it look like a quite intentional, cool outfit idea, very, yeah. very simply. So I have got a fairly healthy collection of blazers in my wardrobe now, and I absolutely love them and never underestimate the power of a good blazer. Um, 
I also think invest in a quality, a really high quality, simple white T-shirt or black as well. If mm-hmm. you particularly wear a lot of black, um, a great fitting pair of jeans is an absolute staple. Yeah. Um, which is not easy to find. I know a lot of people have a lot of trouble finding a pair of jeans. Yeah, like, absolutely. Like we said before, wherever they may come from, even if you found them in the supermarket, really really doesn't matter a great fitting pair of jeans is just that and they will see you through um I like to have I mean if you were keeping it really really condensed I like to have a nice cotton shirt in my wardrobe and then on the flip side of that something a little bit silky in terms of a blouse Mm. um and then maybe just I mean I prefer to go for midi skirts sorry I'm just looking at my big mass of wardrobe behind this screen oh I would love to see it you have to turn the camera around it's it's a little bit messy right now so I don't even turn the camera around but um I prefer to go with midi skirts over maxis but either or again whichever you're most comfortable in and midi is mid length so down uh, around the calf area yeah yeah, it's a really yeah. flattering length that they cut, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, in winter, I, I like to style those a lot, actually. I'd wear it with knee-high boots and maybe a nice big knit over the top. And again, thinking about those high-low contrasts is a really helpful styling tip, actually, that if you imagine like a, just a simple slouchy jumper being your low, it's not, you know, uh, super luxe looking, I suppose against something quite silky and quite luxurious looking, that contrast is a really handy style tip to to reach for. And it's a good one to kind of play with from your wardrobe. But that kind of condensed, I don't know how many pieces I mentioned there, but eight pieces, for example, of capsule wardrobe. Imagine how many different outfit ideas you could make Mm -hmm. just with that little section. You, you know, you wear the shirt with the jeans or the tailored trousers with the blazer and the And that actually could become your staple wardrobe, you know, throughout the week. Then once you've kind of got comfortable with that capsule wardrobe, you can just, you know, add in pieces as and when you've, you you know, budget allows or you see a trend that you really like and you can dapple in the trends here and there. But it's I tend to spend the most of my budget on those uh, on those staple pieces. Yeah, that makes sense. sense. Yeah. And then I would save on the fashion trends. So I'd try and pick up a bargain from somewhere on a fashion trend. It's going to go out of fashion probably more than likely six to eight months time, not going to spend a lot of money on it. But I would save those pennies and buy the nicest quality blazer I could afford or a really high quality T-shirt because I'm going to wear those on rotation. The white shirt that you have on today is stunning and it reminds me that you just can't go wrong in a white shirt I need to invest in more of these in my wardrobe on the flip side of that I actually I wear a lot of black and somebody did say to me um that they felt that black was quite aging do you have any view on that it's one of those old-fashioned style rules Mm -hmm. and again a little bit like any kind of snobbery in fashion I'm not keen on on those kind of fashion rules because I think it's so different for everybody. Yeah. I wear black. I like black. I like black in summer. I've got a few really pretty black summer dresses. I mean, it's a little bit like we never wear black and blue together. Black mm. and blue is one of my favorite color combinations. I love it. So I try not to delve too much into those fashion rules because yeah. we're all individual. And what I mean, I think your skin tone looks lovely with black. I don't think it's it's aging. Back. There was me fishing for the for the compliment. Well, you've got it. You look lovely. Thank you. Black. Thank you. In the bag. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I think they say a lot. And I think you have to take a certain amount of it with a pinch of salt and just kind of go, okay, thank you for your opinion. I'm going to do what I like anyway, you know? Yeah. I, just, yeah. I don't buy into too many of those rules. And coming back to the blazer, I have quite a lot of... Um, kind of tight, quite fitted blazers. And I never seem to find, I see a, a, other people in those kind of more relaxed, kind of 80s, a little bit of a roll up style. I you mean, you know, the tip with those. Yeah. You know what you need to do? Just size up. Just size up once. Size up with the fitted ones. Yeah. It, well, even a fitted, all of my blazers are a size up all of them, oh, I very, very rarely would go for one true to size because I I don't, 
see again I don't need the shoulders to fit perfectly on the seam I quite like it to just sit a little bit lower it makes it feel a bit more just a bit more relaxed I suppose quite French style actually just like a throw-on blazer but you can still look elegant with a throw-on blazer if you haven't gone extreme oversized um I mean I don't know if can I grab something to yeah please do yeah so this is one of my absolute favorite blazers right um it's just plain navy really nicely made really beautifully tailored i went a size up with the 40 and it just fits in the most perfect it just has that exact thing that slouch little bit kind of kind of sexy in a way actually mm -hmm. which is bizarre for a blazer but it's got a little sexy french edge to it which suzanne do do very well and that blazer I would literally wear over the top of almost all of my alpha ideas. But a sort of default setting for me would be maybe in springtime, a tank top, a blazer, great pair of jeans and a belt. I mean, you don't, it doesn't have to feel, or it certainly shouldn't feel overdone. You don't have to overthink it, but just having that one element of a beautifully tailored blazer with a very, very simple outfit of a vest or a, a T-shirt and jeans suddenly makes it feel really well put together. Can we see that on, Jess? Would you mind? Yeah, I'll show you on. Oh, yeah. I see what you mean around the shoulders. Now, you see, I would have I would have gone to the store and thought maybe that was a bit big because I can, but it looks great on you. Well, I tend to as well. I always, I don't know, it's just a bit of a mm -hmm. style habit, I suppose. I always shimmy the sleeves up yeah. to the elbows. Don't I feel uncomfortable wearing it just so. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a bit more natural. Push up the sleeves. I mean, people will say, how do you get them to stay up all day? I don't know if I've got fat arms or something, but they never seem to come down. <laughs> so, but you can use a little bit of elastic to hold up the sleeves. Mm -hmm. um, but I just think that looks really relaxed. It looks yeah. casual but it still feels elevated at the same time and, and feels elegant. Yeah, so I've actually got this exact style in a couple of different colours because that's the other thing. When you find a style and a fit that really suits you, it's worth when you can, when budget allows, or when there's a sale or whatever, um, invest in another colour. Because I think it's one of those pieces that it's it's not easy finding the perfect shape so when you do it's worth going okay do you know what i'll go back to the same style and i'll get it in a in a different yeah. room that's a great tip because i thought i was going to have to deliberately buy a kind of something that was made a little oversized but in my size to be able to wear the uh like the hoodies and so on underneath because the ones i've got are just too tight they're too fitted so just yeah. buying something like that but in a size up Perfect. Something quite um, masculine looking is quite helpful as well. Um, I'll just show you this one other one. Uh -huh. I think with with blazers, you could either go down that route of, uh, say, like Reese are particularly tailored blazers. They're, they're very sort of when they've given it a bit of a waist kind of action. I think that can look a little bit too um, not twee, that's not the right word, but it feels a little bit restricting. Well, it's a Reese blazer that I have in black that re I mean, it's very kind of very well made blazer, but it's quite restricted. Like you say, it's it's pretty tight. It's a tough one with them because they their blazers are beautiful. Yeah. They are beautifully yeah. made, really, really high quality, but they're all so tailored. There's no movement. Yeah. There. Absolutely. Well, very good in waist. Whereas somewhere like so the Suzanne one, or this is from Cos, actually. Can you see that clearly? Cos, uh-huh. Um, I love Cos. And they they're a little bit more androgynous looking, a little bit more masculine. Um, again, I sized up with this one, and this is probably, you know, a bit like the navy, one of my most worn blazers, because it just works with everything, literally with everything. I mean, that is one particularly that comes up quite big in itself. Then you've uh, uh, gonna size up as well. I can get a hoodie underneath that, mm. and you know, make a super super casual outfit feel a little bit more put together. Mm -hmm. um, I know the oversized look isn't for everybody, um, but I think it's a again, it's like a little sprinkle of it here and there. Just one size, not going silly, can actually make the world of difference. It can actually yeah. make you feel like you're creating the look you had in your head. Yeah, I'm going to give that a go. That's going to be my autumn look. 
You'll only ever see me in an oversized blazer now because if, if I find something, I just run with it until it's literally exhausted. <laughs> I'll send you some links of my favorite blazers that I've yes. seen about the high street. You can pop them in the description for everyone. Perfect. Um, but there's a few different places I would go for, for blazers because, you know, I've become a little bit obsessed with them. <laughs> yeah, well, do you know, it's so interesting you said Cezanne. And doesn't this happen in life that somebody mentions something to you and then you hear it everywhere? Last night, I was around seeing some friends and one of them said to the other one, she had a little striped t-shirt on. She went, oh, is that the Suzanne t-shirt? And I was like, what's this, Suzanne? Suzanne, what? And they were saying, no, Suzanne, is it French? Is that right? It's it's a rabbit hole going down that one because you'll find yourself loving pretty much everything. Is it very expensive or mid no, okay. no, it okay. is. I mean, it's a French brand. They're based in mm -hmm. Paris. Um, but I would say the price is, if it was here, I would say it's like high end of the high street. Okay. Kind of, I mean, often actually, it's a little bit cheaper than Reese okay. in terms of, uh, you know, cost per item. Dresses are kind of 125, a blazer, maybe 200. Okay. T-shirts are 30 pounds. So we're not, you know, we're not talking silly. Um, and the quality is amazing. Quality is right. beautiful. Okay. And everything, it's one of my favorite brands actually, but everything's got it's practical it's what you need it's the perfect blazer but it's got a little bit of a french twist and i just love that little you know jane birkin sprinkle yeah absolutely <laughs> we those out for ideas well i want to do something a little bit fun just now i mean we talked about skinny jeans already but you know there's some things that uh the fashionistas are just that is so wrong and then somehow they make a comeback and i never know where we are with these individual things so first of all Uggs. I can't stop wearing them in winter. Every year I go, I'm not going to wear them again this year. And then the chill comes and they're straight back on the feet. What do you think about Uggs? Oh, I feel like I'm going to offend you now because you've you've got a pair. I'm unoffendable. <laughs> it's just as well uh, in living with three boys in my home. I have become unoffendable. Oh, yeah, I know that boy. feeling. <laughs> they just tell you like it is, don't they? Absolutely. Um, I don't have any Uggs. I don't mm. wear them. Mm. But but uh, that's not to say I don't like them and I do get the practicality of them and they are ridiculously warm for your feet. However, it, it annoys me that everybody I ever see wearing Uggs, they've slopped at the back. So if you watch someone from behind walking in Uggs, the back, it just goes down into the uh, inside of your foot. They look really sloppy. No one can quite walk straight in them and they mm -hmm. just end up looking a little bit too slouchy for okay. me personally yeah, well you've put me right off this might be the Maybe year that they're going to... <laughs> but but I do get it I get it they, they're warm and sometimes you just want to be warm but yeah. I, I really liked and last year I bought myself um some like snow boot type things so uh -huh. I, I got the same theory but they had like leather around the foot so I think if you've got a little bit more support around the foot you're not going to get that really sloppy people just look like yeah. they're slopping around in Uggs and it yeah. just it's hard to look elegant in that yeah I think that's fair and I was actually looking at little snow boots the other day so this could be the year I'll send you the picture if I go for it yeah do how about Crocs Oh, Crocs. I've got a son who lives in Crocs, but I have got him. I've got him the ones. They're not the standard ones. They've got the kind of white trim. They almost look kind of trainerish. My boy, my youngest, um, mm. is obsessed with Crocs, and I know it came back round again. Everybody's wearing them again. I personally don't wear them, and I probably wouldn't. But I see again the practicality of them. I, I think they look cute on kids. Yes. You know, when they're dinky Crocs and, and what, what is it they say? They put them into sport mode or whatever and they feel really, you know, cute in them. And I, I get that. But I mean, I, I'm i actually funny about anything that's super round toed. I just don't find that very It's flattering. not that flattering. Yeah. Like even I've got a pair of ankle boots that I wear in winter that are kind of round toe. And I always feel much more elegant and elongated when I wear pointed instead. So I kind of think... It's about keeping the line of your, if you know, if you want to sort of lengthen yourself out, keeping that line running down to your toes. If you've got a pointed shoe, it keeps the, the line running all the way down to the toe. If you've got quite a heavy, like Crocs are really heavily round toed, yeah. it just kind of stops in a, in a clump of shoe. And it's very hard to make that line feel seamless all the way down. So 
probably for that reason i don't i don't really wear yeah. them oh that's fair sandals with socks which at one point would have been a huge no i mean when we were kids my sister just used to lose her mind over my dad appearing with his stick white legs and then the socks and the sandals but he would not take those socks off and then one day he he was shaking a sunday times style magazine at her a few years back and saying they're in you know <laughs> Are they in or out? You know, I actually really like that look. And I know that's probably not a popular opinion. But I tell you my favourite, favourite look. Um, and it kind of was in fashion, maybe when I was sort of 20, was a thing about wearing um, high sandals, like nice going out shoes, mm -hmm. open toe with pop socks of some description. Mm -hmm. um, but the but the pop sock, I can show you my foot, needs to finish just sort of as your calf begins. That's the most flattering point to have it fit. Okay. So you kind of shimmy it down a little bit. And I've seen a resurgence of that back on the uh, on the catwalks again mm -hmm. for autumn winter. It never really goes away with the big fashionistas because they love that look. And I really like it. I think it looks cool. Um, right. But I, I, yeah, I, I've got and I've got some I've got some spa sparkly pop socks that I would wear with my sandals. Um, but it's not for everybody, I know, but... I know the look, I can see the look, and I'm inspired yeah. to try it because sandals with, with a heel hurt my feet. So that might actually just be the practical and stylish solution. Give it a go. And if it makes you feel good, then then there is no harm in trying. I absolutely agree. Yeah. And I think it looks quite cool. Certainly when you wear something a little bit shorter, it's it just, it sort of takes away from it possibly feeling a little bit too glam or a little bit too tight. It gives it a, a kind of cute edge. I think that's what it does. It adds a bit of cuteness to it, which tones things down. And I prefer to twist, you know, those shorter dresses in that manner that, for instance, I would never wear a short dress with high heels. I'll always wear flats or sandals with a short dress. Okay. But with a long dress, I feel comfortable wearing heels. Um, yes. I think it, it's just, again, about trying to get that balance right. So it doesn't, I hate feeling too, too glam. And yeah. so just getting a bit of a contrast there, I think, is a, is a good thing. My final one is pajama suits because I can't, I mean, I know they're not called that, you know, those all in one silk. No. When people actually look like they're wearing silk pajamas. It's a look, and I, I saw somebody just the other day. That's been a couple of years now. I've seen people out, if you're at a, like a ladies' lunch, not that I go to a lot of ladies' lunches, but there'll be somebody there, and you go, oh, it's like they've arrived in their pyjamas, and then you go, no, it's a look. Um, and I just can't get on board with it, but I feel bad for saying that, because I'm sure some of them cost an absolute fortune, and they are, they look, the silk looks absolutely beautiful, of course. I mean, I love cohorts. Um... And I think going tonal with an outfit or monochrome, as in the whole outfit is, is one colour, I think that's really elevating. And it can, you know, it's a very easy trick, actually. If in doubt and you want to suddenly or you need to suddenly look elegant, just mm. pick out a few pieces of the same colour to wear right. together. OK. E even if it's blue jeans, a blue T-shirt or blouse and a blue blazer, three different tones of blue that that tonal look will actually just make you feel a bit more put together and elegant. Okay. But I'm with you on the silky looking, slightly pajama-ish cohorts. I think there are far nicer cohorts out there than that look personally. Yeah. Uh, like something in linen, like if it was linen, it yes, would absolutely work. But because it's silky, then you instantly think it looks like pajamas. And yeah. like you, I've seen it a lot on Instagram and there are some women who do look great in them. Yeah. But I would feel a bit silly like I look like I'd be in my pajamas. It's not my my favorite look personally. Yeah. yeah, I have to agree with that. Um I actually forgot one that is uh that's it's a source of debate in this house because I wear one and my my husband's like visors which are really practical because you can wear them with a ponytail and all the rest of it and they shade your face but there's a certain look to them. I still love mine and I wear mine but one that like ties underneath or is it permanently fixed in place it's just got a little bit of i've got a couple actually i've got one that was a straw one that was supposed to look a bit more stylish but it's just really not that practical and i've got a sporty one that has elastic at the back that i i just stick on <laughs> you know when i'm going for a walk i agree with you i agree with you really on those i think that you know certainly like we're just packing at the moment to go on our holidays 
and I could do with one because it's it's practical. It keeps the sun out of your face. I definitely don't want to make my pigmentation any worse. So it's going to cover that section of your face. And I think they can look quite chic, actually. I mean, yeah. I found, a, I don't know, a long time ago, I was traveling in Australia and there was this, this brand and she does super, super chic ones um, called Helen Kaminsky. Have you ever heard of her? No. It's not cheap, um, so definitely a piece that you should buy thinking, I'll have this forever, but beautiful, beautiful quality, like raffia versions and different straw ones and like little leather trims, really super, super chic and practical too for being in the sunshine. Well, maybe that might settle the argument if I actually stepped out in a kind of stylish one. Yeah. High fashion visor. Doing your skin lots of favours, so don't well, worry about yourself. Uh, that's the most important thing. Um, <laughs> I was going to ask you about skincare because, of course, you're known for fashion and so on. But are you kind of big on skincare and treatments at this point in life? I mean, I love all my my creams and potions. And obviously in this this job, I get I'm very lucky to get sent a lot of things. Um, so I love like the whole routine and I have a full on bedtime routine and then a morning routine. And certainly as I've got older, I've started using retinol and mm -hmm. um I think for me, I don't have a problem with my wrinkles. I don't care about wrinkles. I actually quite like wrinkles on me or anybody else. I think it's I think it's nice. I like to see laughter lines on people. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. The laughter lines around here don't bother me at all because I think it's like it's kind of personality in there. Yeah, absolutely. And I just think I would I've been working on trying to correct my pigmentation. That mm -hmm. that bugs me. Um, I've got, I mean, I was rubbish in my 20s with sun cream and, you know, it, yeah. I'm definitely paying for it now. So I, I'm always SPF 50 now and I'm trying retinol on my skin. I tried that lovely treatment that you were talking to me about, um, the microneedling with exosomes. Yeah. Um, I thought, do you know, in the end, I thought that made a massive difference. Really? Everybody, yeah, I, I use that and I use the red light therapy mask. Yeah, oh, those two things are are great, absolutely. Just for skin health, that's what I talk a lot about. It's not so much, um, oh, all oh, my lines are gone. It's more the health and balance of your skin that is improved with these things. So it's subtle, but I think I think longer term, that's what really starts to make the difference. Yeah, I mean, the two of those combined, and perhaps because I did them similar timing, people kept going, what have you done to your skin? Have you had filler because you you look like you're, you're glowing here? And I was like, no, honestly, I haven't. No, in my cheeks, I had a disaster with my lips, which I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. But I'd had nothing here at all. I think it was just the combination of those two was making me really glow. Yeah. So although I'd previously, you know, in the past, and certainly never religiously tried Botox, I was kind of a bit like, I don't even know why I'm doing this because mm -hmm. actually I don't mind my wrinkles here. Yeah. It's a bit of a pointless exercise. So I stopped. Um, but I equally, I don't, you know, no judgment from me, anybody who mm -hmm. does, because I mm -hmm. think each to their own, if it makes you feel okay. comfortable. Um, and, <laughs> and I had a particularly bad experience with a little bit of lip filler recently. So I would never, ever, ever. Did you have to get it dissolved or because your lips look great? What what happened? Nightmare. I don't know what possessed me. So I was in, my husband was doing a gig in Belfast mm -hmm. and I actually think I'd cut my fringe. So the fringe looked bad. An element of being bored in the hotel room while he was rehearsing and busy. And I was like, I'm going to pop into the town past a clinic who had a, an appointment. I went, I just want to try a little bit of lip. You just walked into some random clinic for lip filler yeah i was that stupid stupid woman and i was like tiny 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 i said i only want a little bit at the top don't do the bottom now i already have this is my normal lips now i already have big lips i never have needed lip filler i don't know and i don't even want lip filler i don't know why i did it i think i was just <laughs> feeling a bit insecure or something so anyway, I come out, my lips like this, like real trout mouth, really, really sticking out. The gig was that evening, by which point it got bigger and bigger and bigger. So it was swelling. Yeah. The oh. swelling was insane. By the next morning, I looked ridiculous. Like, and I had YouTube things to film. Oh. I thought, I, can't, I was like, oh, I can't, how can I do it? I look ridiculous. 
And I think I was either allergic to the stuff they put in. She said, I've put such a tiny amount in. I can't believe you've had a reaction. Or the numbing cream. It could be that. The placement of it, you know, just not getting the positioning right. So it hurt. I didn't like the look of it. And it swelled. And I wanted it to disappear. And it was expensive. So all in all, not a very successful experience with <laughs> lymph. Yeah. <laughs> I would never advise anybody do, uh, you know, stupid. Well, you know what? Um, I talk about this a lot on the channel because it always comes back to whatever treatment. It's the practitioner. It's finding the right medical practitioner because unbelievably in this country, people can give injections that don't even have a, med you know, they're not doctor, nurse, dentist. It's absolutely crazy um, because so much can go wrong with it. Serious stuff can go wrong with it. Um, but if you find somebody who is highly skilled and has a super cautious approach and an artistic eye, it can work really well. And I kind of think I, I have big lips. It was a stupid idea. And and I don't care about wrinkles anyway. So that's yeah. me done, I think. Right. Uh, last question, because uh, this interests me. I mean, being a style influencer, do you always try to look your best when you leave the house? Is that a thing for you? Or have you been caught out looking like you've been dragged through the hedge? <laughs> well, do you know, I have been caught out quite a few times because I'm just, I'm very just, this is me. You know, mm -hmm. what you see is what you get. And I almost forget that there's a lot of people that follow my my channel or my, my Instagram. And so if anyone sort of comes up in the street, I kind of think, oh, how do you how do I know you did I meet you at a party and then oh no I watch your channel like, oh okay that's exciting and I think I'm more chuffed that, that, that they recognize who I am I think I find it really flattering and it's exciting as well you know that um it's easy to forget when you're filming in your room and you know showing your outfit ideas it's easy to forget that there's a lot of people around the world that that watch these things so yeah, I'll pop out in all sorts of manner of things. If I'm just popping to the shop for a pint of milk or something, I've got my hair on my head and a pineapple and bump oh. into them and they go, oh, I watch your channel. And you go, oh, I, I do normally dress better than this, honestly. Like You just caught me at a moment. <laughs> it's just one of those days. I was having an off day. But yeah, I really should you should correct that. But I, you know, you know what it's like. You just yeah. got to sometimes throw something on and pop, pop to the shop. Yeah. Well, if anybody ever catches Jess in Uggs or Crocs, I want to hear about it. <laughs> you need photo evidence of we that. Want, yes, that's what we want. <laughs> I'll send you a picture of my snow boots instead and see yes. if I can sway you onto those because I, I think, think a little bit of support around the foot really can work wonders. Good. Well, thank you. Lots of great tips for us there and so many more tips to find on your channel. So I hope that folks will go and, and take a look at that. And thank you so much for your time today. I've loved it. I could just carry on chatting all afternoon. It's lovely having a girly chit chat. So thank you so much for having me on. And hello to everybody if you've seen me for the first time. Well, hope to have you back again, Jess. Thank you. I'm going to link below to Jess's Instagram page and her YouTube channel so you can follow more of her expert tips if you haven't already. And I've also included links to a few examples of the Cezanne and Coz Blazer styles she mentioned. And I'm keen to know your thoughts in the comments too around some of the timeless pieces that keep you feeling stylish and whether you deliberately size up or down to achieve your favourite look. And don't forget you can listen to the Honest Channel podcast on the go on YouTube Music, Apple or Spotify and you'll find more advice and information from me around how to age well, look and feel good for longer on my website honest.scot. And by scrolling down to the bottom of any page, you can subscribe to my monthly newsletter where I round up all my latest content so you don't miss a thing. But for now, thank you for being here today and I hope to see you next time. Bye.